Good afternoon folks. Today we're going to take a look at BTRFS, the better or butter file system for Linux. I did not know I could get this excited for a file system, but here we are. So, BetterFS is a file system, the piece of software that stores your files and their names on your disk. And we'll take a look about the pros and cons of BTRFS and how it compares to XT4 and ZFS. We'll see how you can format your disk with the BTRFS and how you can convert your EXT file system to use BTRFS. Just a fair warning, you probably should not try to use BTRFS if you come from a distro which does not use BTRFS as its file system or isn't comfortable editing the FS tab. Let's jump right into why you should use BetterFS. To start off, it supports transparent compression, which means that the files you write are compressed by the file system before they're stored on the disk. This decreased my file system usage on the disk from 22 gigabytes to 10 gigabytes on my laptop, and that makes a huge difference when you only have a 64 gigabyte disk. It does not decrease the speed compared to XT4 in any meaningful way on modern processors, but it greatly increases the amount of space you have to store files. It's also quite a new and active project supported by several major companies, and so it has a very modern co-design which allows it to be extended in the future. It's built into the Linux kernel and therefore operates in kernel space, which makes it very fast. It has best class fault tolerance, as it includes checksums for all files, which avoids silent data corruption. When you use the file system, it checks the files and their checksums to make sure that the file has not been altered on the disk. This is much safer than ext4 if you want to keep your data for a very long time, or even avoid data corruption in environments where, for example, the magnetic radiation is strong and your hard drive splatters get corrupted by it. It's actually easier to set up than ext4 because you don't have to worry about the amount of inodes you need to allocate, and so it's just mkfs.btrfs. Being a copy and write file system, backups are very cheap on it, so you can take as many snapshots as you want in a day for, to example, test a new program, and then you can revert to them, and the space it takes is almost zero. The compression can be set on a file per file or directory per directory basis, which means that you can optimize for speed in certain directories. It also supports subvolumes, which enables quotas for certain parts of your drive. So if you want a program to only have access to 10 gigabytes of storage, you can make that program's cache be a different subvolume, which has a limit on 10 gigabytes. It also supports software RAID and adding of devices later on, so you can expand your file system if you add new drives to your system. And to ease the transition from ext4, you can just convert your current file system, so you don't have to rewrite all the files and mess about with permissions. You can just use the btrfs convert utility, which is included in almost all Linux distributions. If you have another btrfs file system on another drive in your computer, such as a hard drive, which acts as a archive disk, you can store backups and snapshots on that also with very thin margins. Because of the software rage and the ability to add devices later on, it has great resizing capabilities and you can easily just shrink the file system while it's mounted so you don't have to go into a live CD and then shrink the file system. I also did a test on a small 512 megabytes partition and ext4 took up 26 megabytes of space while btrfs took up 128 kilobytes when the file system was empty and this is because it does not use inodes and therefore you don't have the wasted space at the start of the partition let's take a break i'd really appreciate if you subscribe as it helps this content spread further by the infamous algorithm and my channel to grow thanks right 
Let's quickly go over how you can use BeastreeRFS. So using the CLI, you can make a file system using mkfs.beastreeRFS and then your device name. And as with all mkfs commands, you can add a label by specifying the dash capital L flag and then mount it to a appropriate mount point. What you have to do now is to add it to the FS tab. If you're not comfortable using the command line, you can always use gparted, where you can just use btrfs instead of ext4 when creating a new partition or reformatting a partition that's already there. Using gparted, you of course also have to mount it manually on the command line and then add it to your fs tab. Let's take a look at some mount options you can use. So I'd recommend using no a time, which disables the access time parameter but it greatly increases performance on this file system because it is a cow file system copy and write and if you access the file it's a write because it has to record when you accessed it and then we have compression so you can add compress equals zstd which compresses files with the zstd algorithm and it's very fast so you won't run into a cpu bottleneck if you want to compress all the files, you can use compress-force equals zstg and I'd recommend doing this on a file system that does not include a lot of media files such as your main drive. I'd also recommend enabling the auto defrag option which defragments the file system while you're using it. You also have the option to convert a ext3 or ext4 file system to better fs. I'll mention this in more detail a bit later. To understand what BTRFS really does, we'll take a look at what a file system really is. So the fundamental blocks in your computer are called block devices, and these are floppy drives, hard drives, SSDs, CGs, USB flash drives, and RAM. And these are the building blocks of data storage. They contain a continuous block of data which can be written to and read from. To be able to store more than one file on a block device, which just is a very large file you could think of it as, we use file system and these organize data. So to keep track of the size and position of all of the files and the directories they are in, file systems are used and so they store the name, position, metadata such as permissions of each file and the file systems are the software that looks up where the actual file on the block device is. Now we understand the basics of what a file system is and what it does, let's take a closer look at the features of BTRFS. The main one is compression, so you can use either ZSTG, LZO or ZLib as the compression algorithm. I'd strongly recommend ZSTD as it's very fast and almost as good as LZO on compressing your files. Another important part is the data integrity of the better file system and silent data corruption where the data is corrupted but you don't notice is way more common than you think. And BTRFS keeps checksums which prevent this and robust tooling means you can almost always recover your data and the ease of use of BetterFS is quite impressive so you can do almost all the operations while the file system is online including defragmenting, adding and removing subvolumes, managing devices and resizing the file system. The absence of inodes makes the anxiety of choosing the right inodes to bytes ratio go away. The free copying and backups is great, especially with the tooling such as Snapper and BTRBK. And the file system is a B tree structure, which is stands for binary tree, and so the file structure is in a tree which is enables fast searching. This is only a fun fact and not important for you as a user to know. The architecture also uses a cow mechanism which stands for copy on write. This means that files are never mutated or changed, but completely rewritten each time you write your file. This together with the file system being B tree means that you can store a reference to a version of the file and it stays the same.
Regarding performance, the better FS is almost as fast as XT4, but with three backups and compression, this means that you'll take up a lot less space and you'll spend a lot less time backing up your data. So I'd say that better FS is actually faster than XT4 in nearly all scenarios. I mentioned that BetterFS could do software raid and adding of devices while online, and this is because of its inbuilt volume management. So you can add devices by just running BetterFS device add, and then the path of the device, and then the path of the file system as root. If you have a dual boot with Windows on the same drive and then decide to shrink the Windows partition, you can just make that a better FS partition, and then add it using the command I mentioned before. If you need a file system with a caching drive and a slower hard drive, I'd recommend using LVM on top of better FS as that can manage faster devices together with slower ones. Let's talk a bit about a great feature of BTRFS that is the conversion from EXT file systems. I've done it on three devices, my laptop, my main machine, and another drive on my main machine. And everything went to plan. It only took like three minutes for each of the file systems. Really quite a nice procedure. After the conversion, you have to change the UUID in your bootloader and the UUID in the FS tab and then disable file system check in the FS tab, which is to set the last field to a zero instead of a one or two. This is very important as BTRFS does file system checks while the file system is online. You must of course also change the type of the file system from EXT to BTRFS in FS tab. If none of your files are corrupted and it worked as it should, you can continue to remove the subvolume, which can be used to revert the file system. This whole procedure is documented in a document I'll link below. To improve the performance and compress your entire file system, you can also defrag and rebalance the file system. Let's take a quick look at how the file system conversion works. So, XT4 file systems store their inodes at the start of the disk. And so the inodes are the metadata for files. There exists a certain number of them defined when you run mkfs.ext4 when you make your file system. Because BetterFS does not use inodes, it dynamically allocates space for metadata. So, the program that converts the file systems reads all the inodes and creates metadata in the BTRFS format in an empty part of the drive. Now the metadata, which is the files you can view, just point to where the files were in the XT4 system. So it does not change anything on the file system except add some new BTRFS metadata. You can revert what the program has done because it does not change anything and that just returns it back to ext4 and all of the btrfs metadata isn't registered by ext and so it's just empty space that can be overwritten later. See the document linked below for more details on how this is done. On the topic of ext4, let's talk about how to compare. So, ext4 on LVM is quite comparable to BTRFS, but it's a bit more clunky as you have another component running, that being LVM, and therefore it's harder to manage and less flexible and harder to set up. And so there's no compression in LVM and ext4, you're losing out on almost half your drive because of this. The compatibility of ext4 is wider because it's more standard, but since BetterFS is built into the kernel, this should not be a problem if you don't use any janky Windows XT4 drivers. BetterFS also have better data integrity, no inodes to choose when you format the file system, and it's less complex than the combination mentioned before, and LVM has worse snapshot support and it's slower compared to BetterFS. You can snapshot your system and it'll only take like a few milliseconds. If you compare this to plain ext4, BTRFS is as easy to set up if not more because of the absence of inodes. It has way more features with the compression and snapshots and the possibilities to expand and use them down the road. And it's nearly less performant and 
ext4 has much worse data integrity even if you disable the copy and write feature on betterfs which can be useful if you want the maximum performance in a cache for example for this last part i'd like to talk about the similarities and differences with zfs so they're very similar and betterfs can be thought of as linux's zfs so the better things with BTRFS is the licensing. This has limited ZFS from becoming part of the Linux kernel for a long time. BTRFS is also part of the kernel and it's way easier to manage when you're on Linux. It's also more flexible with different size block devices and it's very active in development. It also has a lot of user-friendly tools for backups and snapshots including Snapper and BTRBK. The pros of ZFS is that it's more stable in very advanced situations such as RAID 5 and RAID 6 when you have several drives, including parity drives. The whole, I'd definitely say go for BTRFS on Linux as it's native to Linux and made for Linux supported by several companies. This is going to have to do it for today's video. Make sure to look at the sources and the write-up of this essay in the description below and hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.